28. If the Earth and its atmosphere were constantly spinning eastwards over a thousand miles per hour, then clouds, wind, and weather patterns could not casually and unpredictably go every which way, with clouds often traveling in opposing directions at varying altitudes simultaneously. 29. If the Earth and its atmosphere were constantly spinning eastwards over a thousand miles per hour, this should somewhere, somehow, be seen, heard, felt, or measured by someone, yet no one in history has ever experienced this alleged eastward motion. Meanwhile, however, we can hear, feel, and experimentally measure even the slightest westward breeze. 30. In his book, South Sea Voyages, Arctic and Antarctic explorer Sir James Clark Ross described his experience on the night of November 27, 1839, and his conclusion that the Earth must be motionless. The sky being very clear, it enabled us to observe the higher stratum of clouds to be moving in an exactly opposite direction to that of the wind a circumstance which is frequently recorded in our meteorological journal, both in the northeast and southeast trades, and has also often been observed by former voyagers. Captain Basil Hall witnessed it from the summit of the peak of Tenerife, and Count Strzelecki on ascending the volcanic mountain of Kyrenia in Owihi, reached at 4,000 feet, an elevation above that of the trade wind, and experienced the influence of an opposite current of air of a different hydrometric and thermometric condition. Count Strelecci further informed me of the following seemingly anomalous circumstance that at the height of 6,000 feet, he found the current of air blowing at right angles to both the lower strata, also of a different thermometric condition, but warmer than the interstratum. Such a state of the atmosphere is compatible only with the fact which other evidence has demonstrated that the Earth is at rest. 31. Quoting Zetetic Cosmogony, Thomas Winship states, let imagination picture to the mind what force air would have which was set in motion by a spherical body of 8,000 miles in diameter, which in one hour was spinning round 1,000 miles per hour, rushing through space at 65,000 miles per hour, and gyrating across the heavens. Then let conjecture endeavor to discover whether the inhabitants on such a globe could keep their hair on. If the earth globe rotates on its axis at the terrific rate of a thousand miles per hour, such an immense mass would of necessity cause trem a tremendous rush of wind in the space it occupied. The wind would go all one way, and anything like clouds which got within the sphere of influence of the rotating sphere would have to go the same way. The fact that the earth is at rest is proved by kite flying. <laughs>